Billionaire investor Wilbur Ross made his fortune buying up companies in industries like coal, steel, and textile. Now he's taking his big ideas around the world, whipping up new investment partners and finding new business opportunities. Fresh off of a trip to the Middle East, Wilbur Ross joins me now in another CNBC exclusive interview. Wilbur, nice to have you on the program. Welcome back to Closing Bell. Thank you, Maria. Good to see you again. Good, good to see you. So you're just back from the Middle East. Tell me, what were, what were your observations? Well, it was fascinating. I had last been over there about six months ago. There isn't the slightest hint of any slowdown in anything, especially not in real estate. Indeed, in real estate, it seemed to me even more cranes were operating both in Dubai and in Abu Dhabi than had been true before. Isn't it amazing? I also just came back from there, uh, Wilbur. Uh, I was in Abu Dhabi and Dubai and, and uh, Qatar, and I just couldn't believe the economic boom that is just so underway there. It's really fascinating and, and exciting. Well, it is, and it doesn't seem to be fueled by debt. It seems to be an awful lot of this is being done with equity capital, and I think there's a good reason for it. Remember, these fellows were quite wealthy when oil was at $20 a barrel. Now with it at $118 a barrel, you can imagine the cash inflows that they're getting. So are you, were you looking to uh, try and partner up with, with investors there, uh, the big money investors, to try and make bids for, for uh, financial services, which of course is something you've spoken about right here before? Sure. Well, a, a number of them are investors with us already. So I was there for a conference. There was a private equity conference in Abu Dhabi. About half the speakers were from the Arab world, some Saudis and a bunch from the Gulf, and then the other were funds like uh, ours. So it was partly for the conference and partly to bring up to speed our existing partners about our plans for financial services. So, so let me ask you about their appetite to, to invest right now. I mean, you know, when I was there, I, I mentioned to Sheikh Hamid, the uh, uh, Prime Minister of Qatar, uh, about the investments that he's made, you know, buying Blackstone at 30, and of course then it right. went all the way down to 13. He said then he bought more, or, or buying, you know, uh, Credit Suisse and seeing that decline, you know, Abu Dhabi buying Citigroup and seeing that decline. Are these value declines, you think, going to dampen their enthusiasm to buy U.S. banks? No, I don't think so, especially in the case of Abu Dhabi, because remember, what they bought was a convertible preferred, so they're getting an 11% yield while they're holding the paper. So it's not exactly the end of the earth to make 11%, even if the upside wasn't as great as they had hoped. So they are long-term investors, and they can afford to be. I don't know if you're aware, but I did the calculation on the plane. In America, we are spending $100 million per hour, 24 hours a day, 365 days the year on oil. And indeed, this year, since it happens to be a leap year, it costs us another $2.4 billion for oil. It's amazing the amount of cash that's being generated, a lot of which is flowing to the Gulf countries. Yeah, it is amazing. And not only that, but these Gulf countries are not only, you know, pouring it into investments, like you say, some of the financial services, but they're investing in their infrastructure, hospitals and schools, and really setting themselves up for future generations, as well as looking for opportunities around the world. I want to get your comments about, about where they're going to be putting their money away from the U.S. Listen to the exchange that I had, uh, a portion of it, with, with Sheikh Hamid in Qatar last week. Okay. Let me ask you about investing around the world. I know that you're just back from a lot of travel, coming from Asia. You talked the last time we spoke about business opportunities there and in the emerging markets. Where are you seeing opportunity right now to, uh, to devote some dollars or devote your assets? Well, uh, I was in Cambodia and I was in Vietnam and in China, and I just come back. Uh, we are working with these countries. We are working with India, with uh, Malaysia, Indonesia, with Singapore. And uh, we found that there is a lot of opportunity. Interesting that, you know, Sheikh Hamid, not just the head of the QIA, but also the prime minister and the foreign minister of that country, uh, they're looking away from the U.S. They're looking in Asia, Wilbur. Well, it's natural because that's where growth is, number one. And number two, you've got to remember Asia is a lot closer geographically to these fellows than we are. From Abu Dhabi to Delhi, India is only about a four-and-a-half-hour plane ride. So it's their territory. 
also there are quite a lot of Muslims in many of those countries. Certainly in India, uh, there are in, in uh, Indonesia and several of the others. So there are all sorts of historical trading connections as well, and there are commonalities of interest. So I, I don't think it should be at all surprising. I think also they feel comfortable there in that there's no uproar when people from the Gulf states invest in those countries. I think some of them were a bit put off when this whole thing about the Dubai ports that exploded and, and had a very negative public reaction about a year and a half ago. Yeah, no uproar in China, unlike other parts of the world. <clears throat> so were you able to convince the uh, investors in the Middle East, Wilbur, then, to uh, partner up with you on, in pouring money into some more uh, mortgage companies? You said you're looking uh, pretty aggressively in the mortgage area still. Yes, we are, and uh, they seem quite interested in it. You don't really have mortgage servicing companies in their part of the world, so they're getting used to the whole concept as to how they function. The, the whole structure of lending uh, is different out there from what it is here, but in some ways that's good because it creates a kind of scarcity value where our activities are about the main way that they could participate in mortgage servicing in the U.S. Let me ask you about inflation, uh, Wilbur. Number one, is that, do you worry that there is actually inflation happening there? A lot of people worry that, you know, price hikes are continuing when it comes to real estate. A lot of things are rising in terms of uh, valuations there. Uh, and also, uh, when it, uh, as it pertains to Europe, the euro, even though it's down today and yesterday, a lot of people say Europe is going to become less competitive because the euro has been as high as it is. Well, what are your thoughts on those two items? Well, for the first time in our auto parts business, which, as you know, is quite global, we're in some 17 countries, for the first time we're starting to give some thought to exporting auto parts from the U.S. to Europe. Uh, I never really imagined that we would get to that, but the arithmetic is getting to the point where there's some logic to doing that. Similarly, uh, many of the original equipment manufacturers in Europe they're now thinking about putting plants in the U.S. because with the currency differential and the high wages in Europe, uh, we're almost a less low-cost country for them. Mm -hmm. Well, what, what about uh, the, the possibility of a slowdown in Europe right now? Uh, you know, we had the Royal Bank of Scotland uh, this week talking about the uh, multi-billion do uh, million dollar write-down that, that that company took. Are European banks as bad as, uh, and in need of capital as much as the U.S.? And, and would you be putting money to work in Europe right now, Wilbur? Well, uh, a couple of questions there. I think the European banks have tended to run at more aggressive ratios of assets to equity than have the American banks, and many of them got hit pretty hard with the subprime loans and other things. So I believe you're going to find other institutions there following the lead of Royal Bank of Scotland and doing rights offerings, maybe not $12 billion in size, but substantial terms of whether we would go into Europe, sure. You may remember we had teamed up with Sir Richard Branson from Virgin uh, to take a run at Northern Rock. Unfortunately, the government decided to nationalize it. And frankly, I think part of the reason they're having so much difficulty in their mortgage market and their real estate market now is that they took over one of the larger lenders and they aren't really running it the way a private sector would. Interesting. So who are you working with in the Middle East, Wilbur Mubadal or Adi or what? Oh, well, they, they prefer not to be named, particularly <laughs> on big worldwide TVs like this. <laughs> I understand. Wilbur, it's always nice to have you on the program. Have a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you soon. Thank you, Maria. Thank you. Wilbur Ross coming to us today in Palm Beach.